Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, a failure to plan is a plan to fail, and Canada has no COVID-19 vaccine plan. The government has secured access to the vaccine. What they have not done is told us who, when, where, what, and how Canadians will get it. Worse still, they're attempting to downplay the severity that Canada's lack of a plan implies. As a former military logistician, I cannot overstate that the complexity of the prioritization, transportation, and security of the vaccine distribution must not be underestimated. The vaccine may not be available yet, but the value of being ready when it is will be measured in deaths prevented and livelihoods saved. This government has had months to prepare, but has failed to act. Canadians are waiting. Canadians need a national COVID-19 vaccine plan now. News and Greetings by Canadians for Canadians. Space Space Cafe. Have a good day. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, in May, this government signed with Chinese pharmaceutical giant Canso, CanSino to manufacture a COVID-19 vaccine. In late August, the deal fell apart. It wasn't until September 16th that this government opened up a new approval stream for COVID-19 vaccines that could be imported to Canada. The first approvals weren't applied for until October. Mr. Speaker, why did this Prime Minister cost Canadians five months in the vaccine race because he wanted to partner with China. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, from the spring, we knew that the way through this pandemic was going to be with vaccines. So we set out uh, to, organize, to make deals and to find out uh, how many vaccine companies we could uh, sign potential deals with. We actually signed uh, and announced deals uh, with Moderna and Pfizer in early August, well before uh, the uh, CanSino project uh, fell through. We put all our eggs in as many different baskets as possible, and that's how we have the most diverse portfolio portfolio vaccines and more doses potentially per capita than any other country in the world. We've been there for Canadians. <laughs> Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister partnered with CanSino first in May, and we know from Global News today that CSIS had been warning this government about CanSino for years. In fact, we asked the Public Safety Minister last week if intelligence officials had briefed the Prime Minister and the government about risks on CanSino. He refused to answer, Mr. Speaker, and Canadians deserve answers. How delayed is our vaccine response going to be because this Prime Minister preferred to partner with China ahead of everyone else? Yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the answer is not at all, not delayed at all, because we set out to uh, make sure we were knocking on every single door. We were ensuring uh, that regardless of which companies or which researchers found the vaccine first, Canadians would get uh, doses of those vaccines. And that's how we ended up with the broadest portfolio of potential vaccines of most countries in the world and more doses per capita than just about any other country. We have been there with a solid plan to ensure that Canadians get vaccinated when the time comes. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Quote, what China did is they got what they needed from Canada and they stopped the vaccine shipment. This neutralizes the ability for Canada to participate in developing the vaccine. End quote. This is the assessment of a leading intelligence expert on how the Liberal government got played by China. Why did this government bet our nation's health, our economy, on a partnership that it was told was against our national security interest? The right honourable Prime Minister. Once again, the Conservative Party is just making things up. We actually secured the broadest range of vaccine potentials. We knocked on every door to make sure that Canadians would maximize their chances of getting an effective vaccine when they came through. Yes, when CanSino uh, withdrew, uh, we went from potentially eight deals with vaccine makers to seven deals with vaccine makers. But those seven deals that we have cover the best portfolio of 
of any country in the world and more doses per Canadian per citizen than just about any other country. That's the leadership we've shown. That's how we have Canadians' backs. I just want to remind the honourable members that the way it works is when you're named, you ask the questions not while the person is answering. That, that just doesn't work in the, in the chamber, and I'm sure it'll cause a lot of distractions. Well, it is causing a lot of distractions. I just wanted to point out to those who forgot the rules. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. President, entre les mois... Mr. Speaker, between April and June, France will vaccinate its entire population. In the U.S., the country will be vaccinated by June as well. In Canada... Our Liberal government says some Canadians will be vaccinated by September. How will Canadians feel when the U.S. economy reopens, but we have to stay locked down? Why the delay? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Health Canada is currently studying four different vaccines on an accelerated, in an accelerated fashion. We have secured millions of doses of vaccines for Canadians. We are looking after the safety of them. We are ensuring Canadians that these vaccines will be safe. At the same time, we have guarantees for doses for Canadians. We will weather this pandemic together. We will come out on the other side thanks to everything that we've done together. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, this week, the Vice Deputy Prime Minister tabled her economic statement. And all it is is rhetoric. There's no plan for rapid testing and vaccinations. No. No economic recovery. The Liberal government is afraid to make vaccines a priority for Canadians. Quebecers are concerned because it's almost Christmas. It's time to give them some hope. When will the government put forth a plan to give this country some hope? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Conservatives want to talk about a plan. Well, here's a plan. We are protecting the health of Canadians with the economic statement. We are ensuring that all Canadians have access to a vaccine that is safe and effective as well as free. The plan will enable our economy to come back strong with measures for those sectors that have been the hardest to hit. We will res put in place a better situation for all Canadians. We remember what uh, the Conservatives did when they uh, went into uh, an austere planning phase in 2008. We have a better plan for Canadians. Island and Rideau Lakes. Mr. Speaker, we know the Prime Minister's usual reaction when the RCMP come calling with questions about his corruption or ethical breaches of his Liberal colleagues. He rips the phone out of the wall and locks the door, blocking them at every step. But last week we heard from the lobbying commissioner that there are three illegal lobbying inquiries sent to the RCMP since the start of this pandemic. Is the Prime Minister aware of any recent or ongoing inquiries by the RCMP into him? Liberal staff or Liberal members? Yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, in their characterizations, Conservatives continue to just make things up. But I can answer directly on that question that we are unaware of any such investigations. And a reminder to our colleagues that the Lobbying Commissioner does not investigate public office holders. The Honourable Member for Leeds, Granville, Thousand Islands and Rita Lakes. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister doesn't need to take my word for it. Conservatives aren't making up. It's the lobbying commissioner who has said that there are RCMP investigations into illegal lobbying by this government. It's clear that they play fast and loose with the ethical and lobbying rules, and they're being investigated. This Prime Minister is being investigated for a third time. Will the Prime Minister commit to fully cooperating with investigations by officers of Parliament and the RCMP. Will he commit to waiving cabinet confidence? Yeah, right, Honourable Prime Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, I and my office are entirely unaware of any such investigations. And a reminder that the lobbying commissioner does not look into the actions of public office holders.
able to rise to that challenge, and we will do so. The Liberal government has just acknowledged that they will break a commitment to the Indigenous people for clean drinking water. Now, I want this Prime Minister to hear what this means from a nine-year-old girl named B. Munias from the Nistanga Nation who will not be able to go home. She says, sometimes I feel like we don't exist, like nobody knows that we have no clean water. Like we're just ghosts and we're just put in a drawer in a box. Could the Prime Minister look B. Munyaz in her eyes and say why this country has not provided clean drinking water? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, my thoughts. I'll stop the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, someone has their microphone on at home. I want to make sure that everyone has their microphones on mute. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have been working closely with communities right across the country, including Nishkandaga uh, and its citizens, to ensure uh, that we're giving them all the support they need through this pandemic. In terms of drinking water, decades of neglect led to the unacceptable reality of First Nations on reserve not having access to safe, clean, reliable drinking water. We remain aggressively committed to lifting all long-term advisories and ensuring First Nations can have clean water now and into the future. The Fez provided an additional $1.5 billion to accelerate this commitment. We will continue to work in partnership with First Nations to get it done. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Nose Hill. There will be three ways of vaccinating people hospitals, vaccination centres and in the community with GPs and pharmacists. Around 50 hospitals are on standby and vaccination centres in venues such as conference centres or sports stadiums are being set up now. This is with regard to a vaccine that's being, a COVID vaccine that's being released to the public tomorrow. I wish we could say that here in Canada. Instead, we have to congratulate our friends in the United Kingdom for getting their act together. So the question is this. When will the Prime Minister give that exact same information to Canadians? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way we have relied on experts and scientists to give us uh, recommendations on how to move forward on a rollout of vaccines right across the country. We've worked closely with the provinces and territories and we will continue. We put uh, the Canadian Armed Forces Major General Danny Fortin in charge of the logistics of rolling out and coordinating with uh, the provinces and territories on vaccines. Right now, as we speak, Health Canada is looking at four different vaccine candidates. Uh, candidates that are leading around the world and that we have signed for tens of millions of doses for. Canadians will be covered on vaccines. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Nose Hill. Just moments ago on CJOB in Manitoba, Manitoba's Chief Public Health Officer, Dr. Rusin, came out and said that Manitoba's vaccine supply will be very limited in the early months of next year. That's in direct contradiction to what the Prime Minister just said. Meanwhile, we're hearing that New York State is going to have 170,000 doses for deployment on December 15th. Does the Prime Minister realize that he is going to have to update his talking point binder and give Canadians some information Absolutely. on when they're getting that vaccine and where, as opposed to just spouting nonsense about his failure to plan? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Allow me to begin by again uh, telling the people of Manitoba and their public health officer that as a federal government, we will continue to be there to support them while they go through this difficult time. We are there to support uh, Manitoba like we are there to support premiers right across the country who are facing a rise in cases. Uh, part of that is making sure we're able to deliver on the tens of millions of vaccine doses that we have secured because we have access to the largest range of vaccines uh, of just about any other country in the world because we did the work early on in securing doses for Canadians so we can all get through this pandemic together. Absolutely. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, today we learned that uh, scientists from CanSino who were trained in Canada were also working for information gathering networks for the Chinese Communist Party. The co founders of CanSino were part of the program to transfer knowledge and research results from Canada to China. We know that CanSino never intended to honor the agreement, and worse, our Canadian intellectual property is now in the hands of the Chinese government. 
the Prime Minister signed the, the agreement with CanSino knowing these facts. Why? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, several years ago, the partnership with CanSino helped us uh, to fight Ebola. It had a significant uh, positive impact. We considered CanSino among the other vaccine candidates. As part of the negotiations and discussions, we talked about various vaccine candidates, and that's why today we have the best portfolio of possible vaccines in the world and more potential doses per capita than any other country in the world.